night talks before? Okay, not that many people. Do you know what the format is? Do you know what it's all about? Yeah, more or less? This is a five minute talk, 20 <coughs> slides, 15 seconds a slide. Slides go automatically. Yeah, that's the best part. So, um, we have five speakers for you tonight, and then we have Dana, who has not disappeared. So maybe we have Dana. Um, so Mike, where are you? All right. So Mike Morrissey from Muck Rock is going to kick us off. So we need to So in 2010, I, I started to get really worried about sort of the decline of journalism, particularly the decline of local journalism. Now, I know this seems like a little bit of an overblown problem now. It, everything's kind of solved. But uh, in the long term, we're a little bit worried that if we didn't have journalists out there kind of keeping our institutions accountable, maybe things might get a little bad in the future. So fortunately, that, that hasn't quite happened yet. Um, but we are, I was sort of interested in sort of as there's fewer and fewer journalists keeping people accountable. What can we do to sort of build accountability into our systems? What can we do to kind of keep the public accountable, keep the public informed if there's not out there people holding, um, asking questions and people accountable? So we went back and actually we looked through decades and decades of sort of investigative journalism, reporting, projects, activism that sort of led to changes. And what we found again and again was that a lot of times people talk about leaks and Watergate, sort of these big dramatic sort of showdowns, but a lot of times it's sort of people looking through public records and people actually looking through public documents to try to understand what government is up to. So we decided to bring public records into the 21st century. We built a nice digital wrapper around the public records and the free information process. Um, and our goal was sort of bring FOIA into the digital age, bring public records into the digital age. And that meant sort of making nice software, but it also meant sort of making this stuff approachable. One of the things we found was that when you talk to people who use public records, they kind of were people who been doing it for a long time, they thought it needed to be legalistic, and it was very unapproachable people. Well, since then, we've grown into be a network of seven websites. Muckrock.com is the main one, but we also run a bunch of others. And we've helped over a billion people access, we've helped people access public information over a billion times. Um, but what we didn't want to do was just sort of codify government processes into sort of a digital wrapper. Um, a lot of times sort of we take sort of what's existing and we say, oh, we'll, we'll make it online and that's the end of the day. Um, but what we wanted to do was sort of rethink and sort of say, um, what could making, bringing public records into the digital age do it and fundamentally change things? How could we say, oh, you, don't, you can email your request now, but also fundamentally rethink how does transparency work? How does transparency change things um, for better and worse uh, when you make it online by public. So uh, if you've ever filed a public records request, it can be a little bit daunting at first. If you ever go to your government, it oftentimes can feel like one person against a big, scary agency, and, and a lot of times you don't have that many resources. So by uh, Muckrock makes requests public by default, and that means that instead of it's just you being the government, you can say, hey, government, all these other people are watching how you respond. Or it can mean we've had a lot of our users sort of use public records requests as a petition. Um, what we've also seen is that when you share what you're asking for, when you share what you get back, and when you share what matters to your community, other people and other communities can learn from that. People can share knowledge and kind of build on each other's work. And that's really powerful, sort of saying, because now at this point, one thing that journalists weren't always really good at is bringing everybody's voice into the conversation. Journalism and media, even at its best, always missed a lot of conversations were happening. And so by putting the power of transparency in everybody's hands, you can make a better conversation. On the downside, sometimes if you're in government, as we were building and making FOIA more accessible to more people, agencies didn't necessarily have more resources to respond to that. Um, and so one of the things we didn't really expect was sort of how challenging it would be for government acting in good faith to, to respond to all these new requests. And one of the other things that we've kind of seen is that even if you have real documents, if you have bad actors going out there, they can take raw information, maybe emails for example, and take them out of context and make them look like something very different. So we revised our mission a few years ago to be transparency but for an informed democracy. What can we do to make transparency work for everybody? What can we do to sort of make public records and these conversations create stronger communities? 
Uh, because the truth is that news these days, all the information coming at people can be really overwhelming. It can be really challenging for people to pay attention to stuff. Uh, last year when I was going into the election season, uh, it was really hard for me to even know who was up, up for election and, and try to make sense of everything. And I'm pretty engaged. So one thing we've been focusing on is sort of instead of just helping people get information, building out new crowdsourcing tools to help people understand. One of our big focuses at Code for Boston every Tuesday night is sort of building out new project tools so that when government agencies do release stuff, you can work with your community and actually understand what it means. Because one of the things we're really focused on, and I think so many Code for Boston projects do, is not just sort of say, hey, software can fix it, but software can also be an excuse to fix the processes and make sure the practices that we have are really serving our entire communities. So, thank you so much.